It's been four years since Bertha, the world's largest TBM, began excavation. This week, the Mega Machine completed its two-mile drive. This is a big milestone on a bold project. And today we've got ourselves a tunnel. And we are happy about that achievement. This is a, a great day for Seattle. I think this is the time where the city and the region will focus on taking down the viaduct, uh, building a world-class park, and moving ahead as a city. As you can see, the tunnel drive was very successful. We hold through right where we planned to. It was a very nice breakout. I like the way that we came through the wall very slowly and the way you could see the cutter head slowly emerged from the wall. What we're gonna do when we get the TBM removed from here, the work that we're doing to build the interior structures, instead of doing it from the south end, we're gonna come to the north end. We're gonna complete the foundations, lower walls, upper deck, upper walls, uh, accessing the work from this north end. That'll free up access from the south end and we'll start bringing the precast panels in to build the lower roadway deck. It's very well organized. It's a very choreographed operation. Uh, we had a schedule where we were gonna do concrete pours every day. We've done over 400 pours. We haven't missed one of those yet. So the interior structure works going very well. A lot of people early on always wondered how we were gonna effectively build the interior structure and mine the tunnel at the same time without either operation being affected. So I think that's the thing that I'm really proud of and just the coordination of that work and making everything happen in the tunnel at the same time has been a real achievement on the project. Bertha had no easy journey after suffering a bearing seal failure at the start of the drive which resulted in a two-year breakdown recovery program. Challenges for the repaired TBM, once relaunched, continued with changing soil conditions under the city. When we came up Alaskan Way, we were very shallow. We were in very poor soils. A lot of the soils had been dumped there to create the waterfront. Uh, the soils that were naturally deposited there we call under-consolidated soils. And there's a zone that's down at depth that's the over-consolidated glacial deposits, which is very firm and dense material. So as we tunneled underneath the city, we were entirely within that zone. And that's one of the reasons that the, the tunneling went so well underneath the city, because we were in very, very good soil. After breakthrough, workers will be repositioned as necessary for TBM disassembly and infrastructure removal inside of the tunnel. Once the TBM is parked here, all of that infrastructure in the tunnel has to be removed. Uh, I think there's 10 or 11 pipes on the wall, so that's 20 miles of pipe that's got to be removed, plus the conveyor, plus the uh, ventilation duct. So tunnel crews that are not involved with the dismantling of the TBM, those crews are going to be used to remove all of that infrastructure. We don't see the workforce changing drastically over the next few months, but as um, major phases of the work are complete and there's, there's no other work, for them to go on to, then we'll see the workforce reducing on the project. After today, it will take another three weeks before the TBM is in position for final disassembly. The uh, TBM is going to be cut into 20-ton uh, pieces. There's going to be a crane sitting here for the heavy picks. The plan for disassembling the cutter head, uh, basically we're going to cut one spoke out at a time, lift it up, lower it to the bottom of the pit, cut it into 20-ton pieces, lift the 20-ton pieces out, put them on trucks, and haul them away. All those trailing gear gantries behind the TBM are gonna be disassembled, hauled back through the tunnel to the launch pit where they're then put on trucks and taken out through the completed cut and cover uh, to SR-99. The story of Bertha and the challenges she faced is big news in the tunneling industry. I think the tunneling industry is very, very aware of this project. They're very, very aware of the challenges we face. They're very, very aware of how we've met those challenges and what we've achieved on the project. So 
uh, not only us, but I think the tunnel in the tunneling industry has learned a lot from this project and it's going to serve the tunneling industry very well in the coming years. I want to compliment STP, their tunnel crews and wash dot for this historical day. I also want to remind everybody there is a lot of work yet to be done. We're not at the fourth quarter, we're only at about half time and we're planning traffic open sometime January 19th, our current schedule. Uh, we've still got a lot of work to do, but we've got a fantastic team, and we're looking forward to finishing this project and uh, opening the tunnel for traffic. So it's a good day, but my hat's really off to all of my fellow co-workers and colleagues on the Seattle Tunnel Partners team. Thank you.